Hey, hey, this is Julian and you are on In The Blocks. In this video, I'm going to explain which token standard you should choose for your smart contract. So there are many token standard to choose from. There is ERC20, ERC721, ERC1155, and there are like tens and tens of others. So when you're trying to model an asset in a smart contract, it can be really confusing. So in this video, I'm going to give you a quick explanation. So let's start by uh, wondering what kind of asset you want to represent on a smart contract, because this question will give you the answer you need. So roughly speaking, there are two kinds of assets in the world. The first kind is what we call a fungible asset. So a fungible asset is any asset that can be exchanged for another one. For example, if you have a $1 bill, it doesn't matter which dollar bill you have. If you meet someone on the street and say, hey buddy, do you want to exchange my $1 bill against yours? You're like, sure. And this is probably not a good idea, but <laughs> you, you get the idea though. The, the point is that it doesn't really matter which $1 bill you, you have. So that's a fungible asset. And the other kind of asset is a non-fungible asset. An example, so a non-fungible asset is something that you cannot extend for another one. Each of these assets is unique. And an example of that is a piece of art. If you have uh, a famous painting of a famous painter, then you cannot extend this painting against another painting. This is not the same worth. So basically, if you want to represent a fungible asset, you should, choo you should choose ERC20 standard. And if you want to model a non-fungible asset, then you should choose ERC721. Um, so example of this on the blockchain, are, um, so a lot of ICO tokens, they use the ERC20 standard and a lot of games to represent their in-game asset, they use ERC721 like CryptoKitties. Now, the problem is that there are some cases where you want to have some, uh, some group of assets. And so if you just have ERC20 and ERC721, you will need to deploy many of these smart contracts. And very quickly, it will be very messy to deal with all these addresses. An example of that is in a game, for example, you can have a character and this character can own different items but you would like to group all these assets, uh, all these items in, in a single smart contract. So that's why another ERC token standard was created and that's ERC1155. So with ERC1155, you deploy your smart contract once and after you can dynamically create as many ERC20 or, or as many ERC721 as you want. So you don't have to decide right away it can be added dynamically after the smart contract is deployed and all of these sort of uh, sub token will be contained in the same smart contract. So in terms of management, that's much, much easier. Actually, I've created a whole tutorial series about all the, the major token standards. And uh, in particular, I walk through the solidity code of each of these token standard. So you can check it out on my channel. And if you want an easy way to remember the most important information about tokens, then I've created a cheat sheet with really the most important information. You can get it for free. Just follow the link in the description. So do you have any question about which token you should use in your smart contract? Ask me in the comments down below. That's it for this video on which token standard you should choose for your smart contract. Thanks for watching and I'll see you for another video about blockchain. Bye-bye.